Greetings from the University of Auckland. I'm Dr. Santa here, and my team and I will be doing a presentation on the embedded cognitive modeling approach to teaching critical thinking, um, which is required for academic literacy in the discipline. Uh, we are from the ILT, the Innovation Teaching and Learning uh, Unit, as well as the Graduate School of Management. Uh, one of our colleagues, uh, Dr. Nabil al is unable to join us because he's working on another part of the study, which will be, present, which will be presented um, at some point uh, in the future. Um, without further ado, I'd like to now pass over the time to my colleague, Patricia. Great. I'm Patricia Hubbard, and I'm a professional teaching fellow at the University of Auckland, and I'm on this project team, and I taught the Business HRM 701 course that will be referenced throughout this study. So the way we will approach this presentation today is it will be a bit of a Q&A between Santha and I, and there are more slides, but due to the time constraints, we won't be covering all of those, but feel free to review all of those slides yourself if you want more information. So Santa, if you want to start us off by how this study really came about. Sure, Patricia. Um, first of all, um, I was aware that critical thinking is an important skill, both in the academic and professional world. Um, not just that, uh, this skill is, has, is gaining prominence. And according to the uh, World Economic Forum data, uh, I, I have read and have come to know that these skills are going to get to gain even greater prominence in the next five years, uh, and they have been important since 2016. I also realized that there were two problems related to critical thinking. One had to do with the conceptualization of the notion, and the other had to do with how this uh, critical thinking can be cultivated in students. For the first problem, I addressed this in my PhD study in 2019. And for the second, my colleagues and I uh, have addressed it in three different courses, uh, teaching critical uh, thinking for in communicate uh, and communication in three different disciplines. Great. So now if you want to just talk us through how these lessons were developed. Sure. So I first did a needs analysis by understanding the problem-based assignment uh, within each of the three disciplines by discussing it with the lecturers. I then developed materials using the cognitive modeling approach uh, to help students communicate the problems in writing. And finally, I co-facilitated the workshops using the materials that I had developed. There were three tasks that we were looking at, and these are important because they have a critical thinking focus. In 705, a capstone accounting course, the focus was on analyzing strategies during a crisis and making recommendations. In 702, which is a pre-capstone course, the focus was on reading different materials, which, were, which uh, is common in the industry, uh, to ask students to critically apply the knowledge to discuss uh, uh, an issue that comes up, that could come up in the industry. And finally, in the third course, 701, the students were asked to evaluate seven articles uh, in order to discuss the usefulness of the information to a particular topic that was related to HRM. And this course was a pre-consulting course and therefore very relevant for their final year consulting projects. I think one of the really interesting things about this is how the lessons were conducted. So can you talk us through what was actually done in class? Sure. So the, 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 the classes were divided into reading and writing workshops. And in the reading workshop, uh, students were first taught how to extract information using skimming and scanning. We used an Excel document to do that. 
They were then asked to tell us how that information that they extracted contributed to the question that they were trying to answer. Um, this was important because we have often observed that students tend to repeat information from source text rather than transform the information or apply it. And finally, we went through the critical thinking process of synthesizing, which was to actually go through the information and look for patterns, look for gaps, look, look for um, contrasts and comparisons. Now, while we went through the steps, we, we also articulated what some of the critical thinking processes were, which are displayed on the right hand side of the screen, things like differentiation, application, seeing connections, similarities, gaps, and contradictions. So what happened during the class was that the lecturer used an, a sample source text and began to think aloud and verbalize their thinking process while they were scanning and skimming, while they were applying, while they were synthesizing information. And while they were doing that, I was pulling out and naming what these uh, thinking processes were so that the students could match the process to the activity at hand. And we have about nine minutes left on our time, Santa. Wow, that's quite tight, isn't it? So um, I'm now thinking what the best thing to do to get us through within the 15 minutes would be. So in the next slide, you'll see what students did. I'm not going to elaborate further. So they pretty much applied what we did in the classroom and then came back to us for feedback, for clarification, and we helped them to refine uh, the labeling of the processes and the actual activity, how to go about it. Um, this is an example of the Excel sheet, which you can look at in your own time. You'll find that I have labeled the, the thinking processes and each of the steps that I have described earlier. In the writing workshop, the focus was on critical thinking that was used to make decisions during developing the structure, paragraph development and cohesion. And for this, what I had done was develop worksheets that use excerpts of good writing with the questions good writers would ask. By doing that, uh, students were, were being scaffolded into asking those questions. The content lecturer was present to add content information where necessary. And finally, the students wrote a practice piece and got feedback from us before they actually did the final assignment. How are we doing for time? Uh, we have about seven and a half minutes left. Okay, so there are many examples of the worksheets uh, that we covered, but I'm just going to run through one of them and leave, leave it to the audience to, to follow the rest. So in the activity sheet, you'll find that I extracted different parts of uh, a full report, the body conclusion or recommendation section. And then we ask students to identify it, to label it, to justify why they called it that. And they would of course have to use their knowledge of what, uh, what's important in an introduction in order to, to recognize it. And we also went through paragraph development where we asked them to explain what the topic sentence was, to look at how uh, ideas were developed, uh, examples used, uh, how uh, sources were, were cited and so on. So these activities will show you uh, what we did. And uh, activity four basically asked them to uh, list the processes which they thought uh, they could see in the text. And we added on to the list so that we could all come up together with what critical thinking actually was uh, that we could recognize in the writing. And these other exercises here have to do with how they can uh, cite sources effectively without uh, repeating information. And you can read it for yourself. Uh, so you would probably have guessed by now what cognitive, uh, embedded cognitive modeling is. Embedded simply means that we are teaching uh, critical thinking within a discipline rather than uh, separately on its own. And cognitive modeling uh, comes from the work of Denon and Brunner, 2008. You can read more about it if you want. Uh, I've extracted this idea and applied it to my research and developed the, the model uh, using concepts from their work. Great, so with about five minutes left, shall we move on to the 
actual study, Santa, and what was the research methodology that was applied to the study? Okay, since we have five minutes left and um, I have quite a bit of material to cover, I have to now decide what to actually show the audience. And maybe we might take a couple more minutes more. Uh, just keep the time, uh, keep me informed, please, Patricia. So in terms of the research methodology, uh, I use discourse analysis to verify the informal feedback I received from the lecturers. So we received really good feedback from the lecturers and you can see the feedback from this slide that I've just presented. Um, I analyzed the text uh, using discourse analysis, uh, using an external coder or grader. And this external analyst and I worked together during a training session to make sure that we were on the same page in terms of our definitions and in terms of what we were looking for. I then collected the score sheets uh, on her score for critical thinking in the writing and her score for the quality of writing. I tabulated and interpreted the results. And um, you can look at this slide for the uniqueness of the, of the grader. Uh, it is important to select the right person for it. Um, so the aim of the study, of course, is to, um, to evaluate the impact of uh, the cognitive uh, modeling approach on that was used in the classroom. So these are the findings. Um, I've grouped the findings into three main categories. Uh, we found that there were writers who was, were strong critical thinkers and writers uh, coded in green. Uh, writers who were, uh, sorry, those coded in green are the strongest critical thinkers and uh, writers. Those coded in beige are good critical thinkers and writers and those coded in blue are the uh, least strong critical thinkers and writers. Um, something interesting here uh, that I have concluded in the study is there's a strong correlation between critical thinking and the quality of writing. You'll find that as the critical thinking score drops, the writing score drops as well. But you'll notice that sometimes their critical thinking score may be lower than their writing score, meaning that the suggesting that there are two different sets of skills involved. Uh, but I'm not, we're not arguing that they are not interrelated. Mm. Okay, I'm now going to uh, give some examples of uh, what we did. So in the top scorers, we found that students were able to differentiate, apply and synthesize, which were the basic skills, but their level of synthesis was way higher than those in the other two categories. Um, if you look at our uh, excerpts, you will be able to uh, interpret this uh, for yourself. The strong writers were able to draw conclusions, make predictions and assessments. They were making suggestions and um, clarifying how a situation can be salvaged, a poor, sit a poor decision can be salvaged. Again, I've given some examples here. And finally, the, the weakest group of students um, we found um, were students who had the basic levels of differentiation analysis and application, but did not have a high level uh, of synthesis of their work and the writing quality too was not that great. They were not making good uh, critical thinking decisions in, in, in their writing. So there's an example here with uh, some comments at the bottom for you to have a look at. Um, and then finally, I think we are running out of time, aren't we? Patricia. Yes, we have about one minute left of our 15 minutes. So I was wondering if you wanted to talk about what conclusions we can draw from this study and also how can the audience apply this knowledge? Okay, great. So 
the first conclusion I've already alluded to is a strong correlation between critical thinking and writing. And this is confirmed in the literature uh, by the sociocognitive theorists of Flower, 1994, and several others. Um, clearly, there is a level of sophistication in critical thinking that has been displayed, suggesting that this is a developmental process. Next, um, there is a difference between the critical thinking processes involved in the discussion of content as opposed to the critical thinking, primarily decision making in, uh, in uh, during text construction. Uh, and uh, we suspect that a lack of proficiency may hinder the weaker students from exhibiting critical thinking fully. In terms of application, the critical thinking approach, uh, the, the Cognitive modeling approach to develop critical thinking in a discipline can be applied in both academic and professional contexts to solve authentic problems, as well as to develop uh, writing, written communication. And um, I know that we had to rush through the presentation and you probably have a lot of questions for us. So we are offering our time to you on the 8th of July between six and seven uh, and six fifteen and seven Brisbane time on this Zoom link, as well as our email addresses for you to write to us. You have the slides before you to take your time to go through it and listen to this presentation again. And I think our discussion together can be more focused. And I will in that forty five minutes, together with Patricia, have the opportunity to elaborate more on. Uh, several of the points that were made. Patricia and I have done a 50 minute recording that was done yesterday. And if you are interested in that full recording, we are quite happy to send it to you as well, um, where we had the luxury of time to go through all the slides. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone. Thanks for watching and thanks for all of your work, Santa. Thank you.